Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to Holy Mass this beautiful 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, mid October, with a beautiful weather out there. Thanks be to God. But in our Holy Mass this morning, I invite you, and I know that this is already very much on your own hearts, anyhow, I invite you to hold in prayer all those peoples in the pathway of Hurricane Ian from Florida up through the other various states who are struggling now, as we were just over a year ago with the struggle of a recovery from a hurricane. We share their pain and we pray for them at this Holy Mass in addition to all your own intentions. Today's Mass is a continuation of the theme of last Sunday's Mass where we hear again the challenge of living our faith, the challenge of responding to Christ's invitation to believe that he has the power to change my life and give definition and meaning and hope to all of us in all our struggles with life. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To commence the celebration of these sacred mysteries, let us bow our heads now, call to mind our sins, and ask for the graces of forgiveness and peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. For a moment now in silence, form in your heart what you would like to pray for at this, your Sunday Mass. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you would not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has revealed the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to his nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. 
Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading this morning from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. And as he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, shouting, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. And this is the very good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Wonderful story, my sisters and brothers in Christ, and we're so familiar with it that sometimes we may overlook the deeper meaning behind this beautiful gospel, and it's linked directly to the story of Naaman in the first reading. He was from a country called Syria, north of Lebanon and north of the, what we now call Israel, the Holy Land. This man in the gospel was a Samaritan who came back to thank Jesus. The Jews had been at war with the Samaritan people, and so the Samaritan people were despised by the Jewish people. In the first reading, Naaman was cured of his ailment because he listened to the prophet who was speaking on behalf of God. The second man was cured because he came to Jesus and heard Jesus speak and accepted Jesus' word that he would be healed. Go show yourself to the priest, he said. And as they went, they were all healed. But the man came back, as Jesus says, the foreigner came back to say thank you. So rather than see the negative side of the other nine not coming back, what the gospel calls us to look at is the man in the first reading and the man in the second reading were not from the so-called chosen people. The Israelites saw themselves, and rightly so, as the children of Abraham and the children of Moses, and they were the chosen people of God. But God was always making the point and is making it now in the 21st century through you and me that he is the God of all people, from all nations, classes, creeds and colors all are born into this world to be a child of God to reflect the glory of God and to come to Jesus and say Lord where I need healing heal me and where do most of us need healing in our world of sinfulness in our world of selfishness in our world of self-centeredness in our world of judgmentalism in our world of thinking evil or talking evil of others in all the things that make us the human being that we are and the sinner 
that we are by nature. But Christ calls us from our sin into the world of grace, the world of redemption, the world of goodness. Each one can come to him and say, Jesus, Master, have pity on me. And at the beginning of the Mass, we confessed our sins to God and to one another. And that pity, that gift of grace, was immediately presented to all of us so that our hearts would be open to hear the Word of God in this Gospel and every Gospel. So this morning, all of us can see ourselves as the Samaritan who came back. And we can look back in our lives and see how many times we were like the other nine who didn't come back to Jesus and said, Thank you, Lord. You have rescued me. Jesus is always there, always inviting us back to the rescue from the world of sin to the world of grace, from the world of despair to the world of hope, from the journey of abandonment to the journey of faith, hope and love, which leads beyond the grave into the life everlasting with our risen Saviour in his glory in heaven. So this morning then, I invite you, and I invite myself, look into our hearts and see, are there times where I have judged others? Are there times when I have turned away from the stranger? Are there times when I have denied that others have the same rights as I have to freedom of movement, to freedom of religion, to freedom of worship, to decent standard of living, to job, to education, and to all the other rights that derive from my basic human right, which is, I am a child of God, created in love, a child of Jesus, redeemed in love, a child of the Holy Spirit, made holy in love. May your week be one of holiness and grace-filled awareness of the love and the mercy of Jesus in your life. And they go spread that mercy and that love to all whose lives you will touch in this coming week. God bless you. And now we profess our faith in our loving God. Together we pray. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. <coughs> Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate up by the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the faith we have now professed, we make our petitions known to our loving God. That the Lord may continue to draw forth holy and faithful servants to shepherd his flock, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That a spirit of understanding, forgiveness, and love may overcome divisions among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may bring healing, peace, and justice to all victims of violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may strengthen the faith of all families in this faith community, drawing them closer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that our beloved dead who have gone before us in faith may live forever in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this morning we offer a very special prayer for those in the pathway of Hurricane Ian, now in the distressful situation of trying to restore some normality to their lives. We pray for them in particular. We pray also for all the volunteers who have gone to assist them, including those who have left our own area 
to go and be of assistance to those people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this we respect life month again, we pray that all people will come to understand fully that all life and every life is a gift from Almighty God. We will reverence our own lives and all others who are gifts of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we lift these prayers to our Heavenly Father through Mary, the mother of the whole human family, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. St. John Henry Newman. Pray for us. I mentioned St. John Henry Newman, my brothers and sisters, this morning. Today would be his feast day, but we're not a Sunday. He's one of the newer saints of the Catholic Church, a convert from Anglicanism in England in the end of the 19th century and a powerful witness to the faith at that time and a wonderful model today of having courage to stand for the depth of faith which as he discovered in his own life as an Anglican priest, the depth of faith is all residing in the Eucharist of the Mass where Jesus becomes present as the priest of sacrifice. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness this morning we have received this very bread we offer you. The fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, this bread will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive this wine we offer you the fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, but this wine will now become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the bread and wine, the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me your priest from all my sin. Pray now, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, that this bread and this wine, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. This morning we pray preface number two of Sundays and Eucharistic prayer number two. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Gathered round this Eucharistic table of Jesus Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, our clergy, women and men religious, and your faith-filled people. Remember also all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, our own patron saints, Francis de Sales, John the 23rd, Therese of Lisieux, Faustina of Mercy, John Henry Newman, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. United in faith, we pray together now the great prayer Jesus our Saviour himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a simple sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you all. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive him. And may the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, 
not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring everlasting life to all of us who receive him. And for all of you now joining this Holy Mass and celebrating with me by live stream, we pray a prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe with all my heart and soul and strength that you are really, truly, and substantially present on this altar under the appearance of bread and wine. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart throughout this day with every soul receiving you sacramentally, so that in everything I undertake, say and do, I will be as one with your mystical body, the Church, in giving glory to God our Father, vindicating you, Jesus, his co-eternal word, and reflecting to all with whom I come into contact the love of the Holy Spirit in my heart, in our church, and in our world. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. <clears throat> Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Never permit me to be separated from thee. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my holy death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Most sacred heart of Jesus, we place all our trust in thee. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. Queen of Peace, pray for us. St. Francis de Sales, pray for us. St. John the Twenty-Third, St. Therese of Lisieux, St. Faustina of Mercy, and St. John Henry Newman. Let us pray our closing prayer. <coughs> when the Lord appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each and every one of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended now. Go in peace. I wish you all a safe and a very happy and pleasant week.